To watch the latest from India Science, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon to get notifications on all the science related videos. Oxford researchers say getting AstraZeneca followed by Pfizer jabs is almost as potent as two shots of Pfizer. This means that the effectiveness of the AstraZeneca vaccine sold as Covishield in India gets enhanced upon combining it with a booster dose of Pfizer. More on that in the next few minutes. Stay with us. I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science offers from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. Let's move on to story number one. And the possibility of a supply shortage for vaccines led researchers to test, mix and match vaccines. The Comcov trial, for instance, is checking mixing COVID shots could provide protection equivalent to two doses of the same vaccine. The researchers tested the efficacy of standard two shots of the Oxford AstraZeneca or Pfizer BioNTech vaccine or a combination of the two. Their results showed that a combination of the Pfizer and Oxford vaccines provides a more robust immune response than two doses of the Oxford vaccine. The study found significant differences in antibody levels against the virus depending on the shots given. While two doses of Pfizer produced the highest level of antibodies, one shot of Oxford vaccine followed by a Pfizer booster was nearly as potent. The study went on to examine T-cell immunity. While antibodies stick to the virus and stop it from infecting cells, T-cells find and destroy infected cells. Mixing the vaccines had a significant impact with the most potent T-cell activity seen in people who had the Oxford jab followed by a Pfizer booster. The T-cell response was half as powerful when the Pfizer jab was boosted by the Oxford vaccine and lower still when both jabs were the same. Another Oxford study which is yet to be tested for accuracy found that a third shot of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine could work as an effective booster. A third dose given more than six months after the second led to a substantial rise in antibodies and increased the body's T cell ability to fight coronavirus including its variants. Scientists found this and the data showed that a gap of up to 45 weeks between the two doses instead of the currently recommended 12 to 16 week interval can also be beneficial. While these results may push for similar research, one must not jump to conclusions or self-prescribe a change in the vaccination program. Remember, vaccines save lives, so get yourself a shot as recommended. And with this, let's move on to story number two. And infections reported in various animals across the globe have raised questions about whether they need to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Veterinary doctors and experts have been receiving many desperate calls from worried pet owners. Since 2020, many animals have contracted COVID-19. The first such case was reported in a cat in England. Apart from domestic pets, animals in zoos have also tested positive for the virus in several countries. There have been few known cases of lions having fallen prey to COVID-19 at zoos in India and researchers are currently sequencing samples from these infected lions. Big cats and other vulnerable animals like gorillas have been infected at the zoos in the US and elsewhere. Scientists in other countries have started developing specifically designed COVID-19 vaccines for animals. Recently, Russia announced that it had successfully created the world's first animal-specific jab against the infection. The US is rolling out an experimental vaccine against COVID-19. For instance, in California's Oakland Zoo, bears, mountain lions, Tigers and ferrets are set to receive an experimental vaccine against the novel coronavirus. The San Diego Zoo in February vaccinated apes with the Zootis vaccine first tested in mink. The US Department of Agriculture has approved the vaccine for experimental use on a case-by-case -case 
basis. The department aims to monitor the effects and adverse ones closely and then make recommendations about the future of these vaccines. For now, these animals are what we know as lab rats. Based on the outcomes of these experimental trials, countries in the East may soon begin vaccination programs for animals as well. Until then, protect your pets by preventing them from interacting with people and animals outside your household. And if you get COVID-19 yourself, avoid petting, snuggling, being kissed or licked or sharing food or bedding with your pet. And let's move on to story number three. And I'm happy to share an exciting development with you. Indian scientists identified a new type of moss, a small flowerless non-woody plant in Antarctica, one of the coldest regions on the planet. The species is named Bidam bharatiensis after goddess Saraswati, who is also known as Bharati. The findings are published in a new study and the lead researcher is Felix Bast, who heads the Department of Botany at the Central University of Punjab. He was also part of the Indian Antarctic mission in 2016-17 as an expedition scientist. According to a report, during his time in the South Pole, Bast spotted green plants on rocks near the Bharati station on Larseman Hills, East Antarctica. Bharati station is India's permanent Antarctic research station. He carried moss samples home to India, where he sequenced the plant's DNA and compared it with the other plants, a task that took five years to complete. And identifying a new species is hard work. Well, Bast and his team don't understand how moss manages to survive in Antarctica's extreme environment. The region witnesses no sunlight in the winters and temperatures reach as low as minus 76 degrees Celsius. Moss, like other plants, depends on nutrients, sunlight and water to survive. The researchers have a theory to explain this puzzle. They think the species could be dormant in winters, springing back to life in the summers. It could be sourcing nutrients from penguin poop, which is rich in nitrogen, according to a report. These are all theories for now. We will need more data to confirm this hypothesis. It is amazing how life can find its way. That is all in this episode of Science Time. I will see you again with more such interesting stories from the world of science and technology. Till then, take care. Stay safe, stay masked. Namaskar.